we have seen over the last two seasons of the Mandalorian some great episodes, and also a couple of lackluster ones. Today I'm going to rank all of them for you, from the worst to the best. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Shadow Hunter here with another banging video. I'm going to be ranking the Mandalorian episodes from the worst to the best through all two seasons. I was thinking of doing season one, then season two, then combine them together, but I'm just going to do them all because I am I cannot be bothered. All right, so let's get started. Coming in last place, season two, episode two. Um, just not well strung together it's very boring for me um, it just felt like Mando was a taxi driver throughout the whole episode it didn't really push the story forward at all uh, there was a lack of entertainment and it felt too much like Harry Potter and if any of you know me well out there you know I don't like Harry Potter except from number 3 but yeah very boring not worth the watch and just very very lemonade -y. coming in at number 15 I have got season 1 episode 5 probably the only thing good about this episode is that I introduced Fennec uh, we know she's going to be a vital character later on in the series she's also going to be a vital character in the Bad Batch and so, um, besides from that, didn't really tickle my fancy and weren't my cup of tea when it comes to some of these episodes. Um, but from here onwards, all the other ones are good episodes. So if any of you complain about where I put these episodes, um, just put your own down below and I'll, uh, have a conversation with you about them and just I won't disagree I'll just point out some points that I think you got wrong in my opinion yeah it's all just an opinionated thing so let's have fun with it and don't get too nasty down in comments below coming in at number 14 I have got season 1 episode 6 this was a okay episode uh, like I said before some of the good episodes have come down low in this ranking and this is one of them I don't have anything wrong with it it's just not it's like the potato salad at a, at a barbecue it's not something you go for straight away something you go for as a backup but number 14 season 1 episode 6 coming in at unlucky number 13 I've got season one, episode two. Um, it's a bit of a random episode for me. Um, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just there for me. It's nothing too significant. Uh, obviously, we get to choose a child. That'll probably be the good thing about it. But besides from that, uh, just not my cup of tea for you all out there. So number 13, season one, episode two. Coming in at number 12, we have got Season 2, Episode 4. It was a good episode, it just weren't too vital to what we saw in the whole season. Um, it is one of my personal favourites that I go back and watch, but it just isn't top tier. It isn't one of those that you'd think and stands out to you as a good episode of The Mandalorian. Which is why coming in at number 12, Season 2 episode 4 coming in at numero 11 I have got season 2 episode 1 um, the longest episode I think this one is um, I enjoyed it um, bit of conflict over this episode um, I enjoyed it uh, the Boba reveal at the end was amazing uh, we were in introduced to the Marshall uh, Cobb Famp um, the conflict with the crate dragon I enjoyed uh, and yeah I can't really say much about it it's not it's not how I would start the season off but it's a great way to start the season off and I can't really fault it 
if I'm being honest. But do I think I could have done a better job? Maybe. But um, we'll never know. So, uh, season two, episode one, the number 11 spot. Number 10. Now we are in the juicy bits here. Um, I have got season one, episode four. Um, it introduces us to Cara Dune, who we know is a very important character now. Um, she, we learned a bit about her. Um, yeah, um, this is a very relaxed episode. It's nothing too action-packed. It's not a full action story. It's just very nice. It has a nice, tedious flow. It's nothing too extreme, which is what I like about the episode. But I um, can't say much else except from that. Uh, it can't make it any higher because all these other episodes are so good. And yeah, uh, number 10, season 2. Or season one, episode four. Coming in at number nine, I have got season two, episode seven. Now, I feel like this is one that we'll all disagree with here. But, um, this is one of the more psychological episodes for me. And all of you out there know I love the psychological aspects of, uh, of films and TV shows. So, this one was a goodie for me. Um. We see Mando's uh, morals tested in this episode, um, and we see how much Mando will sacrifice to save the child, and how much of connection they do have. Like Mando literally reveals his face to everyone to find out where Gideon was to go and save the child. Um, Obviously, no one knew he was the Mandalorian, but Mayfield did. Um, but uh, he trusted him enough to go along with it, and yeah, just the risks that Mando took just showed how how far Mando has come as a character. Um, I felt like this episode as well was good at building the excitement for the final episode. Uh, obviously, I think you can all agree it did a good job at building it. Uh, we saw Fennec and Kara Dune uh, absolutely wreak havoc as snipers. And, of course, the best part of the episode, we heard that beautiful sound of the seismic charge. First time we've heard that in 17 years. Just that sound is so crisp. But besides from that, number nine. Um, I've got season 2 episode 7 coming in at the halfway mark at number 8 we have got season 1 episode 3 uh, in this episode we start to see the Mando and Grogu father son connection um, it's just a very badass episode for me uh, we see Mando kick ass left right and centre and um, yeah we see we start to see the tr Mando truly change from just a a cliche bounty hunter and we start to see that change to a true father figure for Grogu and just a protector and someone who we'll love later on um, but yeah number 8 season 1 episode 3 so we're on to number 7 coming in at number 7 we have got season 2 episode 3 we see uh, a formidable character from the Clone Wars return and her first ever appearance in live action, we see Bogtan cries. Um, I think that's her name. Um, in this episode, we kind of learn the purpose of why uh, the Empire wants Grogu, and obviously it's uh, to create a Sith, well, a dark side user. I'm guessing, most likely, probably Snoke. Uh, but yeah, a very good episode. Uh, it's kind of a it's a bit vi it's a bit important when you unravel the rest of the season, but uh, on its own, it's not really really a important episode. But obviously, no episode should be seen as itself, and that's why the Mandalorian is such a great uh, TV show. Um, but yeah, uh, we get to see some great teamwork. We see 
the teamwork of the Mandalorians and the Mando, and how different they are. We we don't see Mando rolling with Bo-Katan specifically. Um, if you looked at the gallery for season two, um, you would see that um, they wanted Mando not to work with Bo-Katan like as a group. Like when they did their attacks, they won't want Mando to go in as a group with them because they showed the differences between the Mandalorians, which I thought was really cool and really um, symbolic to how the Mandalorian creed has breached off, uh, branched off in so many ways. Uh, but yeah, number seven, season two, episode three. Coming in at number six, I have got the season opener. Season 1, Episode 1. Uh, this is probably the best way to start off uh, uh, this iconic series. I'm calling it uh, an iconic series because it will be. I guarantee you. Um, this kind of shows us the star and what the bounty hunter life is. And that is kill or be killed. Uh, we kind of knew this already but we see the extent of it fully. Um, we see Mando really... At the start of the season, what he's up to, Mando just wants to hunt people and kill people. And uh, obviously, if that happened, yeah, it might have been cool, but with this Grogu aspect that we can see later on, uh, I think I'd prefer that Mando to this Mando. But it's a very nice way to start off the season, in my opinion. Uh, probably one of the best ways to. But number six, season one, episode one. Before we move on to our top five, please make sure to like, share and subscribe the video. Um, we've got some very exciting stuff coming up. On Saturday, we have got The Chase with your host Chris Knight or The Real Review 3000. It will be T Big Ford Entertainment or Onzo Hodges if you know him on Twitter as and Team LGG Pixels or Geeks and Jordan Erotica. Um, this we've been working on for over a month now. Um, and I would appreciate it if you all just uh, set a reminder for it. Uh, it'll be a good time. Um, if this goes well, then just like how we did with Big Fat Quiz at Year, we'll branch off into more stuff. This could be a bi-weekly thing, like every other week we could do this. Um, but yeah, it's all down to you guys. We make the content for you to watch. If you watch it, then we'll appreciate you. Um, I know with the Big Fat Quiz it might seem like a bit of clickbait for you guys. Uh, but that's why I kind of chased up the thumbnail for it because I didn't want it to seem like clickbait because I knew uh, looking at my analytics it it probably looked that way uh, but yeah um, I appreciate I'll appreciate if you all go and uh, watch that on Saturday um, at 7 p.m. CST 8 p.m. EST and 1 a.m. GMT um, yeah, and uh, if you want more videos like this, um, I will bring them to you. Uh, just leave a comment down below what videos you want to see from this channel. I'm up to doing anything film related or just, um, yeah, just leave some comments down below. And the most liked comment I will probably do this week. So yeah, uh, let's move on to the top five Mandalorian episodes. Coming in at number five, we have season two, episode five. We see a very iconic Clone Wars character for the first time in live action, and that is Ahsoka Tano. Uh, it's a very cool episode, uh, probably one of the more underrated ones in my opinion. Uh, we finally learn Baby Yoda's name, Grogu. Uh, if I'm being honest, I heard it as Groku first. Not Grogu, uh, but yeah. Anyways, uh, we see some badass fighting scenes between the Magistrate and Ahsoka with the Beskar uh, spear and Ahsoka's uh, white lightsabers from Rebels. Uh, and also, we hear the name of someone familiar to you all, Grand Admiral Thrawn. Um, I'm excited to see what they do with this in the Ahsoka Disney Plus show. Because I feel like he will be the main antagonist of that show. But aside from that, uh, Mando kind of has to take a back seat for this, uh, for Ahsoka, which, I mean, fair enough. But 
that's my only problem. They should have given Mando some more stuff to do instead of fight off the uh, pretty much the goons. But yeah, number five, season two, episode five. Coming in at number four, we have got season two, episode six. Now, this is probably my favourite episode, uh, just, like, one of my personal favourites to watch over again. It's definitely one of the more rewatchable ones. Um, we see the return, the official return of Boba Fett. Um, probably the most badass uh, episode ever of this. Uh, we learn Fennec survived, um, and also we go to Typhon, which is the uh, old home of the Jedi in the Old Republic, which was really cool. Um, and also we are introduced to the Dark Troopers, which I will uh, mention later on. But, um, man, this episode's so sick. I can't um, wait for the Book of Boba Fett. Um, it's just going to be so cool. And I... I can't wait. Um, but yeah, this episode, obviously, we see... Uh, we see Baby Yoda get taken, or Grogu. Um, yeah, it definitely creates an exciting atmosphere for the last two episodes. Uh, but yeah, uh, I can't wait to see what Robert Rod Rodriguez does with Boba, because I know he's a big fan of him. And I know he will do him justice. So coming in at number four, we have season two, episode six. Coming in at number three, we have season one, episode seven. Um, this is a goodie uh, if you just want a popcorn episode. This is one. Um, it's a very exciting build to the season finale, season one, episode eight. Um, I see a couple of minor problems which I have with which I don't want to go into right now but we are introduced to probably the best Star Wars villain in a long time not discrediting Kylo Ren but Gideon's gonna be a different level if they flesh out his character um, Moff Gideon is it was a surprise for me because I didn't think he'd do well. I think he'd just be another B Tech Hooks or something like that, or maybe a uh, just a second hand Thrawn or something. But he's very unique in his character, and um, I'll talk about this next. But um, obviously, we know Gideon knows the Mandalorian Creed very well, and um, from what we see in the season one finale he knows them so well that he had a certain little dark saber speaking of season one episode eight let's move on to the number two spot coming in at number two we have season one episode eight uh, this episode was well sewed together nicely writ uh, very well executed it was a very epic episode um, we see the tragic death of IG-11 uh, in what a death more a sacrifice um, and also we see the Mando use the jetpack for the first time a um, bit too reminiscent of, of Boba and Jango Fett but who cares um, and then also we see the Darksaber return, the final frame of season 1 is Gideon holding the Darksaber and yeah this was a very exciting end to season 1 and a, and in November time 2019 I couldn't wait to see what's next and yeah we saw what was next and we saw they went two levels ahead for next season's finale let's move on to number one coming in at number one we've got season two episode eight epic iconic it's going to be written in Star Wars history for a long time um, just the culmination of Gideon and Mando finally cl clashing uh, a very sick choreograph choreographed fight um, Mando using the best gas spear against the uh, Darksaber uh, Bo-Katan joining them 
uh, very badass four woman uh, take out uh, Reeves, Cara Dude, Fennec, Bo Katan just absolutely slamming it through the hallways. Um, obviously, Grogu saved, and just one thing you need to mention for this episode uh, it's not really that important, if you know what I mean. It's just uh, a certain Jedi Master that God by the name of Luke Skywalker shows up. Don't know who that kid is. Of course I know who the fuck it is. It's Luke fucking Skywalker. That moment will forever be immortalised in Star Wars because you never expected something like that and the fact that they kept that secret as well. Um, just you never expect it. You probably expect someone, someone like Mace Windu, which um, I know Danny from Comic Chat has uh, said that he would have thought Mace Windu would have been a better uh, play for him then, um, which I can see that on a lot of levels. But I feel like Luke, just for the uh, emotional connection that you have, and uh, as you can see the emotional connection that it did have with a lot of people, especially uh, the old original trilogy fans, definitely. Um, but Luke definitely was a deal breaker with this episode because if they did him wrong or they just uh, didn't make him a complete god at this point, then what's the point in having Luke there? I mean, Mace could have died protecting the child at least. That could have been a possibility, yeah. Uh, maybe Mace had connection to Luke and Luke ordered Mace to go and get him or something, I don't know I'm just talking bollocks but yeah, Luke Skywalker was a fucking iconic moment and uh, I'm just glad I got to share it with the people I wanted to share it with uh, it was just fucking amazing but, number one season two, episode eight so, thank you all for watching this video. Uh, it's a bit of a long one. I know. I'm, I don't know why I make long videos. It's just I ramble on a lot. And this happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, before you go, before you go, before you go. Uh, I've looked at my analytics. And 56.5% of you are not subscribed. Let's get that down to 52. Before the chase. And if we don't. Then I will come round your house and put a bomb on your nan's wheelchair. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, but I just appreciate it if you uh, subscribe, uh, like the video. Uh, it helps the YouTube algorithm, gets me out there more with these videos. And obviously, us at the fandom managers want to grow and uh, rise together. Um, the Chase, Saturday, me, Chris Knight, uh, The Real Brew 3000, if you know him better as. Uh, we've got Big Ford Entertainment, Onzo Hodges, uh, also, known as, also known as Onzo. Uh, we've got LGG Pixels, or our second channel, Geeks Who Joined Nerdrotica. Uh, an epic showdown. Um, and if you go as well, a bi weekly chase uh, episode, and probably at the end of every six months. Uh, if you know what Beat the Chaser is, then I will uh, just leave that to your imagination. But guys, that is it for me. I'm probably going to go to bed and contemplate my life choices. And uh, all you, stay out there, stay safe. I know the world isn't really the safest place right now. But uh, all you stay safe out there. Uh, obviously, uh, I know... We haven't talked about him on this channel before, but a lot of bit going around about uh, Admiral Doom's death and shit, and it's just it sucks, honestly. Uh, I never knew the man, but he was, from what I've heard and seen, he was a fucking decent bloke. And obviously, all of us here yeah, just, all of us as a community are just trying to uh, thrive together, and we do this for fun. This, this is our just our community and I'm glad to be part of it and um, yeah all of you stay safe out there um, just I know the world ain't the best place for anyone right now especially mentally I know trust me
But, uh, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed. Stay safe. Take care. And peace.